beginners, uh, could you just give me a bit of an introduction of uh, your band? So who and what is Ice? Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're a uh, five-piece hardcore band from Copenhagen. We we make weird, newly guitar riffs and and songs about you know not having a good time, but still you know. Have, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so your debut album, The Underperformer, it came out just last year, so... Uh, well, what's the like origin story for your band? How did it all come together for you? Yeah, well... Uh, hello! <laughs> <laughs> well, um, um, the three of us uh, used to play in another band, like me and Ken and Simon. And uh, we uh, we quit that band, and then we started um, just making some songs, and we didn't have a singer. Um, and then we played what, a year, maybe, and made some songs. And then we found out that uh, Victor, the singer, was uh, quitting his uh, his other band, and then we asked him to uh, to join us to do vocals, and he. Uh, Fortunately, he said, said yes, and uh, and then we played uh, a couple, uh, a year and a half maybe with one guitar, I guess something like that. And then we uh, asked uh, Sam, who we knew from like the same band we all uh, all of us quit from. He also played in that, and uh, and uh, and then uh, yeah, he joined us uh, for for the other performer record. Okay, so uh, well, you put out the live sessions from the Royal Danish Academy of Music, a bit of a bittersweet thing to do at the moment. So, uh, uh, what's the thinking behind these uh, live performance releases? Well, first of all, it's a way for making up, not being able to play shows, um, and we also did like a, a series of. Uh, like three shorter session videos uh, right here from our practice space. And um, yeah, we just wanted uh, with this one to do something a bit more radio-like. Um, and the guy who made it, uh, Frederik van Jakobsen, he's a producer here in Copenhagen. Uh, he just asked us. He is apparently also a teacher at the academy. Uh, and. Uh, Asked us if we wanted to come out and uh, record in this old sick studio, and yeah, so it was it was a really sweet way of just you know feeling like you're doing something with the time as well because it was um, a couple of months after the record came out and we had played a few shows with like sit down uh, you know audience and and yeah so. It was just a way also to you know keep it rolling, having some some content as well because that's kind of the only thing we can do right now. Yeah, how do you feel about streaming gigs? Is that something possible? Mm, I, I don't know. I, I I think it kind of sucks to be honest. Uh, a lot of the things I've seen, you know, you don't really put time to you know sit down and see. Uh, a show being live streamed, it doesn't really do the same thing as a as a like a real live performance. But I think you can mimic that uh, way more with with a recorded live session because of the production value and like, yeah, of course you could do more multi cam shit with uh, with live streaming, but it's a lot more difficult uh, to just make it look and sound good. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, that uh, the debut album came out just uh, September last year, I think. So basically, everything, all of this is uh, happen happening, you know, under COVID, and there's no blueprint for this shit. So, uh, how are you dealing with it, with it all? I mean, how is it to release your like such an important thing, like releasing your debut album and then planning your career ahead under this uh, extraordinary situation? 
Well, we are trying to book shows with our with like our booking teams, but uh, yeah, it's all you know. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. But at the moment, we're just writing a new record and just you know getting ready for that, and then hoping we can get some shows confirmed in the near future. But other than that, like there's not much else we can do. We also have another live session coming. Pretty soon, <laughs> which was actually, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of by chance. Uh, a Danish venue asked if we wanted to go do it, and and they, you know, they they could uh, handle it like a show and uh, pay us for come come doing it, and with, which was really welcome as well. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I know it's really cool. It's I, it's a really different video, also from the the other two ones. So. Yeah, it's just keep the ball rolling, like however it's possible. Yeah, was it like a difficult situation to uh, put the album out, or was it just like when it was ready, you wanted to put it out immediately? Because I know some bands are waiting for better times to put out music. Yeah, for sure. But we actually postponed it a bit. Uh, but that was when everyone was still ignorant about how long it was going to take. So I think our original release was in like mid-summer or something. Yeah. Mid-summer 2020. And then we're like, okay, yeah, we're going to push it back till September. It's probably going to be fine by then. <laughs> uh, how wrong we were. <laughs> and we actually thought about doing a release show. And we kind of played it out. But then everything didn't uh, disappear with the COVID and just ended up making a listening party instead <laughs> because we couldn't do a release show. Yeah. yeah, how is uh, the situation actually there in Denmark? I mean, uh, is there some, like, can you see some local effects already? Or how do you think this time will change the, the music industry in Denmark? Will there be big changes? I think when it's possible to like go to a show again, I think you'll see, well, at least for like the first year or so after, you see you're gonna see a lot more people at shows because people will feel like they like have been missing out for a while and then they want to catch up. Um, so I think like when it's done, it's gonna be really good for the music industry. But as it is right now, it's completely terrible. And our culture minister, she's a dumb piece of shit. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, she does. Yeah, if they don't really support the, the venues and all the festivals for that matter in a, in a sufficient way, that should be possible for, you know, <laughs> one of three, four Scandinavian societies, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to your music then. Uh, the style is uh, called metallic hardcore. So, where does it all come from? Like, what are your influences, and where does the inspiration come from for your music? And how do you like as a band write your songs? Mm, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I guess like. When we when we quit the band, I, I talked about uh, a lot of the time. The first year or so, um, we um, we really tried to um, get away from the the, the oh, yeah the old way of writing music that we were used to in that band, and it took us like a long time to find our own our own way. Um, and the first EP we did uh, the self title. It's sort of a, a, what you call it, a, a bit of an extension of, of that sound. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of like the link between the old band and underperformer yeah. in a way. Um, but then when writing the underperformer record, we, uh, we, we, uh, we found the way that we really wanted to write music and write the riffs and have the influences on that record that we all like listen to and, and really love. Bands like uh, Daughters and you know Converge, Piss Jeans, Piss Jeans Mets, 
okay. retox, you know, uh, a lot of bands that has like this, this kind of weird, weird vibe, weird um, guitar feeling and riffs and, and like sort of doing the weird kind of chaotic stuff with the melodic catchy stuff. That was really our, our goal to do that. And, and it's the thing we still like try, try to uh, keep in our music, like mix the chaotic with the melodic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said that you are already writing the next album. So what's the feeling like? Uh, which way the balance is going to go on the next one? I think it's going to be a bit more varied in a way um the like under performer is a is really straight to the point and uh i feel like the new songs have a bit more complexity to them in a way but it's still it's really it's well it's really it's still kind of simple music but but the, the song structuring is is a bit more has have matured a bit more in a way. It's not like it's gonna be like our most mature album yet, because that's <laughs> totally for sure not. Uh, yeah, I just think the way I think about it at the moment is it's gonna be you know underperformer 2.0 in a way not in in like it's going to be more of the same but it's going to be what we strive for in that record but evolved yeah well uh well metallic uh hardcore well it's still hardcore so are you uh at all a political band well you call the minister already asshole but <laughs> is there any politics in your music yeah i would say so um it's what it's. It's mostly about all of underperformer is about uh, not uh, yeah, like feeling the pressure of of you know postmodern society and and having to find your way in life and like feeling the pressure of you know you have to find your way quickly and get through the system and if you don't fit into that box you kind of get feel left behind or like pushed out uh, of the way 